All right, here we go. Next part. Uh, this one we call a uh, two by one slanted inverted. So this is what it looks like. And it's not to be mistaken with this guy. They're both correctly placed right now. This is not supposed to be like this. And this is not supposed to be like this. The knob almost always goes up. I'm sure there's exceptions. Um, but we're going to build this guy. So you may be thinking about this guy, but really the tutorial for this, if you need help, would be the two by three slanted piece that was very similar to this. Um, we're going to make this guy. We're also going to make some small modifications to it because you got to remember the people that design this, they're professionals. They're really good at this stuff. Uh, to get that shelled out area right there and a different shelled out area right here that aren't continuous with one another is a bit tricky. Um, so we're going to have make some slight modifications, but the part is going to be just as functional. So here we go. Let's open up a brand new part file. And we're going to design this from the side also, just because it's got that slant. Designing from the side makes it a little bit easier. So we're going to put a sketch on this front face and we're going to go to line. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and design it similar to this. Let's make sure we're looking right at that front face, which we are. And we're going to have a line across the top. It's going to dip down just a little bit. It's going to have a slant cut over something like that. Something like that. Yeah? Smart dimension. We know that a standard Lego height is 3 eighths of an inch. So we'll put in 3 eighths. We know that the standard Lego width for a single Lego unit is going to be 5 sixteenths. We know this top part up here is actually two Lego units wide. So that's going to be either 10 sixteenths or 5 eighths. Same thing. And the question here, similar to what we had in the last one, oftentimes people might think, oh, it's, it's, a, flat, it's a flat section, so it's going to be 1 eighth, and it's really not. It's actually less than that. Um, and we're going to just call it I'm going to do this again, even though we did it before. 1 eighth is the same thing as 4 30 seconds, but that would be 1 eighth. We don't want that. We're going to go ahead and make it 3 30 seconds, just to be slightly smaller than, uh, than an actual flat piece. Okay, so that's what the profile looks like from the side. So at this point, we can go ahead and extrude this. It's one Lego wide, so we're going to extrude it 5 sixteenths, and it's going to look something like that, and we'll say okay. All right, so now we've got most of our piece made already. At this point, we're going to go ahead and put two knobs on side. We're not going to worry about that little shell right there just because that gets tricky. Um, we're going to go ahead and throw a sketch on this top surface with a circle roughly right there. Let's go ahead and look at it a little bit better. And if we really want to look at it, we're just going to do that. I'll get the top view. And we're in a smart dimension, this guy. From the top needs to be half of a Lego unit, which is 5 30 seconds. From the center point to the side also needs to be half of a Lego unit. And somehow I got into some weird mode. Let's try that again. Smart dimension. From the side to the middle. There we go. And 5 30 seconds. And the diameter of a knob is always 3 sixteenths. There's our first knob. At this point, we can now do a linear sketch pattern. Entities to pattern. It's going to be this circle. We're going to just pattern on the x-axis, the spacing of 5 sixteenths. So it looks something like that. And we can say, OK. And it, now we can go to extrude. We're going to extrude both of them. And just like all the knobs you make, we're going to come up 1 16th of an inch. So it looks something like that. And we're going to say, OK. There we now have this part almost completely done. The only thing we still need to do is a shell. And we're going to click on this face. And we're going to shell this thing 1 16th of an inch. And we'll say, OK. And it's going to look something like that. Now, what you'll notice is because of this slanted face right here, in order to leave a 1 16th of an inch thickness everywhere, it couldn't cut any closer to this edge. 
What that means is this opening is not actually 3 16 of an inch wide, which means a knob is not going to be able to fit into it. So even though it did shell out the whole part the way I was hoping it would, and even though it's 3 16 of an inch from that edge to this edge, it is not 3 16 of an inch from here to here because this line did not come out exactly where I want it. So the last thing we need to do on this part is put another sketch on this top face and we're going to put a rectangle from this corner coming down. I'm just going to intentionally put it right there so it's not on because I already locked it to that corner. And let's dimension this guy and say, hey, this should be 3 16 of an inch wide and this should be 3 16 of an inch tall. And that is the actual size of the hole. That square will allow a 3 16 diameter peg to fit perfectly into it. And we'll end up looking just like that square cut right there. So now that we've got that, we'll go to features and we'll say extrude cut that. And it defaults to a 1 16th depth. That's plenty. We don't want to go so deep that we hit anything down here. So we'll just say yes. And now. We have the opening just like we wanted it. Okay, that's going to be your two by one inverted slanted Lego piece.